This is the car that changed the face of Jaguar. I know that's quite a sweeping statement, but bear with me here. Before the F-Pace, Jaguar was known for, well, saloons and sports cars. That was it. Yes, I know there was an X-Type station wagon, but Mondale and all that, let's just forget about it. The F-Pace was really the first of the breed. After all, this is the, the company that made the E-Type, for example, the car that Enzo Ferrari, I remember he called it the most beautiful car ever made. There was the Mark II and the XJ, two of the most stunning saloons ever produced. And I'm yet to meet a car fan that doesn't get just a little bit tingly every time they see an XKSS in the flesh. You get where I'm coming from. So when Jaguar went to make an SUV, there was a lot on the table. They had to get it right. And fair to say they did. In 2016, when this car arrived, it won World Car of the Year. Was it perfect? No. Was it a Jag? Yes. Did it drive like a Jag? Yes. And was it beautiful? Well, for an SUV, it, it really is. But now they've facelifted, or updated. I think updated is better. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm saying that, because there are some visual differences, but this car really is an update. You'll see when we go inside. But while we're on the outside, some things you'll notice. The, the double J's here and the LED treatment on the lights. The grille's now wider. Uh, it's even with the front and of course those huge air intakes. Now this is the SVR. I got to choose which car we um, looked at and took for a drive. Why wouldn't I choose the SVR? Yes, there is a two litre petrol, two litre diesel available in R Dynamic and the new straight six, but goodness me, supercharged V8, why wouldn't I? Hey, I mentioned the lights at the front. I wanna look at the back here because this rear light treatment is another new touch on the car. I love these narrow, purposeful, and you look at this, the shape of this rear is just, just fantastic. Hey, yes, I'm a sucker for the fact those quad pipes for the SVR engine, brilliance. Look, otherwise the dimensions are all the same. It's really when you get inside though that you see the real changes. And this is why I said update and not facelift because this is completely different. The dash really did date the F-Pace, especially when it was in a showroom at Archibald and Shorter alongside the, the new I-Pace. And speaking of the I-Pace, I can see it here, these steering wheel buttons, they're from the I-Pace. These rotary climate control buttons, they're from the I-Pace. There's a whole lot of touches, but the thing that really stands out is this new Pivi Pro infotainment system. It's fantastic. It's 11.4 inches, it's big, high def, and it's easy to use. And that was a weakness of the F-Pace, so they've got that sorted. Um, no rotary controller on any of the models now for the gears they've got. I'm not gonna say gear stick, it's definitely a knob. And the end result, thanks especially to the, the new colours used inside, it feels very 2021, uh, a lot more spacious, more modern, but one touch from 2016 remains. That engine. Maybe it makes me a little bit childish because arguably the, the straight six, the P400, the three litre, the mild hybrid, with 294 kilowatts, it's almost 400 horsepower, would be uh, the one to drive. But really it's hard overhead on this one. A supercharged five litre V8, 550 horsepower almost. And the truth is, it's probably the last of a breed. They're not gonna use engines like this soon. I mean, probably proof of what's changing. There's actually a plug-in hybrid on the way. But I mentioned the sound, there's active noise cancelling in this car. So if I turn off the, there's actually a loud button and I have been using it, but I put the car back into comfort mode. I'm on a pretty bumpy country road here, but everything calms right down. There's actually active noise dampening, like they're using those noise cancelling headphones. So the car can actually be quite refined. This is 80 k's an hour on a back road. The fact is the F-Pace is a decent sized SUV, but it hides its size, not just in the, the way it looks from the outside, nothing looks sort of overwrought, but the way it drives, it doesn't feel big. You know, that ability though to do that sort of serene Jaguar style cruise along with the spirited drive, as easier said than done, not all cars manage to pull it off and not all SUVs manage to still be as sort of pointy as this car. The steering is properly sharp. 
and that's nice often you're more what's the word comfortably numb I guess is the way to describe it uh, some numbers uh, prices of the F-Pace start at 99000 up to this the SVR uh, maximum recommended retail price is 169 another number two SVR 0 to 100 in four seconds it's hard to think that one day we'll be saying to grandkids great grandkids <laughs> cars used to sound like this just had to wind the window down just to listen to that an SUV shouldn't sound this good and one day soon it won't but for now this smile's genuine You know, I could go on and on about the engine. It's very easy to do that. I could get excited about the way the stance of this car is so amazing with those big 22 inch wheels. I could talk about how I can't wait to drive that P400 hybrid. The truth is though, it is the cockpit that steals the show. That infotainment system is as good as you'll get anywhere. And it's a reminder too about Jaguar. This is a company founded on, on great design, on innovation, on winning. The tweed caps and pipes, that's not Jaguar. This is Jaguar, and that's the thing. This isn't just a brilliant premium SUV. The F-Pace is a brilliant Jaguar, and that's really saying something.